That's what we talk day in and day out here on Birds 365, Eagles football, McMullen and McDonald. And we get uh, great third participants on a day in, day out basis. We've got that again. And he told me he's going with the computer today. Get that light adjusted, Les Bowen. Uh, the host of Bowen on the Birds podcast, Les Bowen, joins us here on Birds 365. You hearing me, Les? I am, yes. Well, we appreciate you jumping in with us. How's your summer going? Very, very well. Are you? Uh, it's going well, Les. Um, finally heating up a little bit. I, yeah. I don't like that. I need a little bit. Yeah, the humidity is thing. killing yeah. me. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's been awful the past couple of days. Plus, it rains every day. That's annoying. But yeah. anyway, I digress. Um, Jody and I were talking about it, so let's get you in the mix. You know Andy Reid better than most. Mike Bick. Greatest coach of all time. I'm not going to go that far. No. But I, I was looking it up yesterday, Les. You know, Andy's number five on the all-time wins list already, and he's going to pass Tom Landry this year. He's in the conference. He's top ten. He's top ten, and I think. Oh, sure, yeah. As, as we step away from Andy Reid, whenever that is, and I hope it's not soon, I hope he continues to go and, and stay healthy and coach the mm-hmm. Kansas City Chiefs. This is one of the greatest coaches of all time. I think that's fair to say. Would you agree with that? Oh, certainly. I, I was looking at all that stuff when we got to the Super Bowl uh, several months ago. Uh, it, it, he's been, for one thing, longevity. I mean, we think about all these historic coaches like Tom Landry and you know guys that we were accustomed to seeing growing up. And he became a head coach in 1999 yeah. and been, which doesn't seem all that long ago to us, I guess, but a lot of, some of the people uh, watching this now probably weren't even alive in 1999. Right. Uh, he's done it continuously. He did not take a year off when the Eagles fired him. He went right to Kansas city. Uh, that's an extremely long coaching tenure with very few down years. You know, he's, a, a bare handful of losing seasons. You know, I, has he had a losing season in Kansas City? I don't think so. No, well, no. Uh, nine and seven was his worst season. Yeah, I, it's it's an amazing record and uh, two Super Bowl championships. Another one that he appeared in with the Chiefs, and of course the one with the Eagles. So, yeah, you have to. In fact, I go probably top half dozen. You know. Yeah. Uh, all time. I think that's pretty, I, I don't think there's any way to argue it. Uh, you and I are on the same page. I just thought that Michael Vick kind of overstepped it by pointing oh, yeah. out numero uno. Yeah. We understand. The thing, that, the thing that I know there are some Eagles fans who are still not, you know, happy with Andy because he didn't win a Super Bowl here, as we all know. <laughs> the one thing that would irritate me a little bit, I think, and I, as a journalist, it doesn't bother me. But if I were a fan, Andy learned how to be the coach that he is now when he was coaching the Eagles. I don't think the Andy Reid who coached the Eagles would have won that Super Bowl against the Eagles <laughs> several months ago. He's just a much better coach now, I think. he's it, The biggest loss uh, that I've ever covered, I think, the worst loss, it was the first year I was covering the Eagles, that NFC Championship game against Tampa Bay. Tampa? Yeah. When they had beaten Tampa a couple months yeah. earlier, easily, same team, same players, except John Gruden had a different scheme this time, and Andy didn't adjust well to it. That was an era, you know, I'm, I'm all on board with today's NFL is about passing, but that was an era when there was running was still a pretty mm-hmm. big deal. And the Eagles were running all over the Bucks. And Andy, they got the lead, and Andy wouldn't stick with that. He wanted to throw it all over the place with a quarterback who had just come back from a broken fibula and wasn't sharp. And, you know, they should never have lost that game. And I don't think today's Andy Reid would lose that game. And they would have killed. Yeah, I mean, experience. <laughs> That, that was in the Super Bowl that year against Tampa. It might be the worst AFC representative of the of this century. It was yeah, really uh, uh, people 
yeah, yeah people laugh at us because you know we have gray hair at times but experience matters yeah. and i don't know how you get experience without getting experience I, that's you know, exactly right yes so yeah. that was the game for young andy reed the coach yeah yeah and i mean i think it's logical that he got better i agree with you yeah. but i don't know how you speed that up other than yeah. going through that and absolutely learning from it yeah. And yeah. and it was quite fitting that they tore the vet down afterwards because yeah. as Bowen's telling you, it was as, as bad as it got as far as Eagle Watch go yeah. over the last 20 some odd years. All right, I want to ask you about a different Eagles ex head coach, the guy in between Andy Reid. Well, we had a couple, uh, and the current uh, head coach yeah. that would be Doug Peterson. I don't know which one we're coming up to, I think. Uh, we're coming up to uh, I want to ask coach? About which coach you're both I'm going to ask you about Doug Peterson Nick Sirianni because you were there after the 2017 championship the next year Doug Peterson came out with a line that stuck the new normal oh yeah that everything changed when you're prepping for a season after winning a Super Bowl well, Eagles didn't win the Super Bowl last no. year they came this close but they did not win the Super Bowl but certainly expectations have changed yeah. and pressure has changed. What's going to be the Sirianni slogan? And I don't think Doug meant it to be a slogan, but yeah. guys like McMullen and McDonald and Bowen made it into one by harping on the fact that it was the new normal, except it wasn't. Uh, it didn't quite pan out that way. How does Nick Sirianni handle the fact that uh, things are different going into this season coming up than they were last season? Well, I think Jalen Hurts has already given us a good idea of what that might be when he said, you know, last year's over. We haven't done anything. You know, I think that's the the mode. I don't know if that's what Nick is going to say, but I think that's the mode they need to be in. I don't think they can be in any way. It's going to be so much harder this year with the schedule, uh, with the defense kind of being re redone with a new coordinator. Um it's it's the the playoff uh, dominoes probably aren't going to fall as neatly as they fell last year when they really weren't even tested going into the Super Bowl. Uh, I, I think they need to start at ground zero this year and uh, really, really grasp the immense challenge in front of them instead of being at all comfortable with what they've done or even taking a lot of satisfaction in what they've done i think that's it's got to be something along those lines is we haven't done anything you know we didn't win uh and and by the way in 2018 i was wincing uh with all that uh, new norm normal talk that was so yeah, all over the building all this yeah there, it was uh, they, they took that down real quickly yeah me. malcolm took that down this super bowl uh yeah. signed in the locker room he, he got it that is, it was really a celebration and it was like okay now we're the new dynasty or something and it, it if you win your first super bowl ever maybe be a little more you know uh humble understanding of of how rare this is and not just declare yourself the, uh, the team of the age, you know, and uh, yeah, that, that didn't go over well and it didn't turn out well, which I think you could have foreseen, you know, as it was unfolding. Yeah. Well, you know, I think Nick has been, it's kind of boring for us at times less, as you know, but mm -hmm. he does preach, you know, day to day, week to week, don't look ahead. Um, so he's good with that kind of stuff. But my, my question to you is you've been around a lot of teams. It's easy to say that stuff. Yeah. But if you keep saying the same thing over and over again, it gets pretty stale pretty quick. Um, and we, we just been through it with Doug Peterson. Yeah. Who, you know, after they won the Super Bowl, as you mentioned, First Super Bowl in franchise history. We just lost less, so I'll continue. Hopefully, he pops back up. Uh, so I ask you, Jody. Um, it, it's partially you should be proud of it, but the second part is the messaging. How do you keep it fresh? Is that just an innate thing? Is that just a feel thing? Because 
I mean, he, he says the same thing over and over, and we get tired of it as reporters. I can't believe the, the players kind of start hearing the same thing over and over again. And we'll see if we can get less back. Yeah, I'm back. I'm sorry. I was I was cocky there. I adjusted my screen. <laughs> the new normal. I was getting like Doug Peterson after yeah. the Super Bowl. I thought, well, this is going so well. I'll adjust my screen. Whoop. I was no. gone. And here's where to answer John's question while you were gone less, and and he'll re-ask it so you can answer it as well. I think it's easier for Sirianni because yeah. he lost. Yeah. Because he can say, We didn't get it done. We came close. But we didn't get it done, and our goal is what it was. We need to win the last game of the season, so we're motivated. We've got uh, reason to go hard every single practice. We're not resting on our laurels. The Eagles won the 2017 Super Bowl, so right. that that made it, it. Although it's very similar, it's not exactly the same. I have confidence that Sirianni will handle it well this year, that he'll say the right things to both us and the media and to the players as well. I don't think it's going to be a problem. If in 2020 hindsight, we think that the Eagles could have handled 2018 differently and or better. I don't have that worry going into this year. Do you? I don't know. I, I agree with everything you're saying. Nick sometimes worries me a little bit. He gets, he gives the right message, but he has a lot of confidence and he has a situation this year that is, I, I think a lot of the team's success is going to have to do with what happens in the coach's room. He has these two new coordinators, uh, one of whom coming in from the outside, the other isn't. And there's a lot that kind of has to be reestablished in terms of his and his staff's, you know, continuity and and the way they work together and and all that stuff and i hope he takes all of that very seriously but i agree that he he has a good message you know that the fact that they didn't win it is you know a very potent message i think and also this is it's a tricky transition but it's also easier than the 2017 to 2018 transition where you were going back to carson wentz even though he wasn't quite healthy uh, you know, to even start the season. In retrospect, that was a much trickier situation than I think we sort of gave it credit for being going in. You know, there was all this talk about all these guys that had missed the Super Bowl run and how they were going to come out and, you know, be on yeah. fire and the team was going to be better. But these guys missed the Super Bowl run because they were getting old and getting hurt a lot, most of them, not Wentz, but Darren Sproles, Jason Peters, guys like that and and they guess what they got hurt again yeah you know, uh you know i mean it, it in retrospect that that situation wasn't as solid as we thought it was uh this situation is pretty darn solid and w i had brandon brooks on my uh podcast a few weeks ago and i was kind of going over some of the trouble points that i see some of the things that could really bode ill for the Eagles this year. And he sort of waved all that away. And he said, look, is Jalen Hurts still the quarterback? And I said, yeah. He said, well, they're going to be okay. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing how, 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 thing, how. That's a big weight to put on that man's shoulders. Yeah. But the more I thought about it, kind of had a point. <laughs> He's up to the task, yep. Yeah. yeah, last week, I probably asked you this before, but, you know, Jody and I do the show every day. You know, mm -hmm. and this time last year, all we talked about is Jalen Hurts. Is can Jalen Hurts take the next yeah. step? Is Jalen Hurts the guy? And now we got Brandon Brooks, an all time great Eagle, saying, Oh, don't worry about anything because we got Jalen Hurts. Yep. Man, how things yep. change in a calendar year. Well, it was that kind of year, and it was really that kind of Super Bowl. It, it, despite the, oh, it was great, the, fumble, the Super Bowl, yeah. despite the fumble for the touchdown, the second half of that game. I've never seen – even Nick Foles didn't play better than Jalen Hurts did in the second half of that game. Jalen Hurts willed that ball over the goal line a couple times. I mean, he just he just took it in his hands and just, okay, we need to score here. We need a two-point conversion, you know, whatever, you know. Uh, I mean, that was – that cemented it for me. And I'll be shocked and disillusioned and – bum foozled and all that stuff if he 
doesn't pick right up where he left off and doesn't lead this team forward, you know, in a, in a positive way. Les, I need you to look into your upcoming crystal ball for this season for me for one particular player. Cause John and I have tossed this around a little bit. I don't think we've done it yet with you in his three seasons in Detroit. Uh-huh. DeAndre Swift has caught 156 passes. That's a lot of passes for mm-hmm. a running back coming out of the backfield. 46 is rookie year, 62 is second year, and 48 again last year. And he still hasn't played a full season. 13 games, 13 games, 14 games. So he misses a couple, and he still yeah. puts up those kind of receiving numbers. I don't think anyone would argue that he's been one of the best pass-catching backs in the National Football League. Is that going to be a big part of the Eagles' weaponry this year? Really good question. I don't know the answer. But, you know, this has not been – we're used to seeing that around here. I mean, Andy Reid was huge on that. Andy liked it. Uh, I remember many years ago, Deuce Staley hated the fact that he was as much a receiving threat as he was a rushing threat. They, Deuce didn't want any part of that, but it was that was the way Andy ran the offense. <laughs> um, and then Chip did it, and uh, Doug did it, and Nick really hasn't done it. So – That'll be interesting. This, did did Nick not feel he had? You know, Miles Sanders started out just fine as a pass receiver, and then kind of deteriorated in that in that yeah, part of did. the game. Yeah. I felt like uh, that, was that the reason that we didn't that we haven't seen a lot of this from Nick, or is it just something he doesn't want to do? Uh, maybe we'll find out this year. It's it's got to be with you got, you know, Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown and Dallas Goddard out there. And it's kind of hard not to make that the focal point of everything. And you if you're smart, you're going to make that the focal point of everything. Yeah. But, you know, there is a there is room to do a little bit more of that. And uh, now that they have DeAndre Swift, that'll be that'll be one of the real interesting things to follow. And, and I can't pretend I'm, I'm sorry, I can't tell you what he's going to do. But I, I do think that's an option, maybe a better, a more credible option than it was last season or year before. Yeah, I, I think, and I've said this, so I'll run it by you, Les. I think it's two reasons. One, Nick did it when he had Phillip Rivers dumping yeah. the football off. One, it's the quarterback. The quarterback is better than dumping the football. He just runs it. Instead of getting seven yeah. yards, you get 10, 15 yards. Yeah. But number two, you bring up A.J. Devontae Dallas. One of them is always open, so you never yeah. get to the third progression. Yeah. Um, so I think it's those two sort of things conflating. I think Kenny Gainwell's a really good receiver. Just people don't know it because they haven't yeah. seen it yet. And now you have Swift, who's a very good receiver. But I don't think it matters with this particular quarterback as much as if you had say Philip Rivers, then I think it would be a huge part of this offense. Really good point. Yeah, yeah, that's an excellent point. But I'll say this. I think they need to find a way that Hertz can do that, can do the running thing a little bit less often and still be himself and still be comfortable. You know, I kind of felt like when he first came back from the shoulder injury last year, he was not running nearly as much. And I think it affected his whole game. I think he became, you know, for a while there, he was not as sharp and not as, you, you could tell he wasn't himself. Uh, but I don't think, you know, him running the ball 15 times a game, in the long run, that's just not going to, I know, I, you know, you hear this all the time and it sounds trite, but, it's not going to work. It's not going to, he's going to get hurt. He's going to get an injury that's going to take him out of the playoffs or something. Uh, you can't do that. You know, it's been proven over and over and over and over and over again. You can't do that. And, uh, you know, I'm not saying he should never run the ball, but I do think he should look a little more to dumping the ball off here and there. Understood, but John and I kind of believe he's going to be damn close to running as much this year yeah. as he did last year. Nick, it's what I, he I, wants to do, you know, and that's a big, it's a part of his personality. And, you know, it's hard to, that's going to be a difficult line to, to hew. And I believe 
Nick, when he said, why would we ask him to do less when we're paying him more? If we're paying him more, we're going to ask him to do at least as much, if not more, going on down the road. All right, so here's a wacky, wild idea. What would be, would it be advantageous? Would it be smart if the organization thinks that, yeah, we got to skim this guy back a little bit because we just don't want to risk him because we gave him the mega contract. So we need to convince him that we need him running less designated pass play back into the pocket starts to break down. Shockingly, none of the three first options are open. His first instinct take off, make 10 yards. Do we need Donovan involved here? Because Donovan played a lot like her the first couple of years. And then he said, no, I need to stay in the packet to prove that I'm a pocket quarterback, not just a yeah. running quarterback and the like. Should Donovan talk to Jalen Hurts at all going into this season? No, I don't. That's a different question. I mean, that was so long ago that there was an overtone back then of black quarterback can't be pocket passer that Donovan was trying to prove was wrong. I think we're way I hope we're way past that these days. I don't think anybody doubts that Jalen Hurts can stand in the pocket and pick up, you know, second and third options and read defenses and things like that, which is what Donovan was fighting in those days. What happened with Donovan, in my view, was he started to really get hurt. The fibula was the first thing. Then there was knee. Then there was uh, something else. I forgot now. But he had some serious injuries. And he realized, you know, hey, I'm getting older. You know, I can't. I I've got to really protect myself. And he became less of a, frankly, he became less effective as that whole process went on. Even though he wasn't really old. It was kind of like what's happened with Russell Wilson, and maybe Russell Wilson will will uh, change that with a new coach. But you know, Russell Wilson last year was not Russell Wilson. Uh, he's getting a little older, and he's not as much of a a threat to weave through the defense for 15 yards. And you know, I don't know if that was a big part of what happened to him in Denver or not. But you, you don't want to. I would not. Donovan to me. Donovan's career is not a uh, is not a, a something you want Jalen to emulate. Uh, I, I think Donovan's potential went largely, you know, unexplored. I think, like you said, he he started out great. Uh, Donovan ended up just short of the Hall of Fame, in my view. He needed like two more really good years to be a Hall of Fame quarterback of that era, and he didn't have them. And I, I don't think you can. I, don't, I wouldn't get into that too much with Taylor. Okay. Yeah, I mean it's it's difficult. Obviously, every player is different, but I I do think you're right. Less the game has changed. I think people are more accepting. I think Donovan was fighting against uh, more than just the average. And you know, it's one of the things that, and I think Jalen Hurts has talked about it. Is you know the other people coming before him that's made it a little bit yes. easier. Yes. And, and Donovan's one of those guys. It's interesting because he is to me, he's a borderline hall of famer. He's not going to get Border. in there, yes. but if he won the super bowl, yes, I think he's a hall of famer. I yes. think, you know, and, and, and by the way, when I say that, I, and I talked to Dama, I'm sure you've talked to Dama mm -hmm. a lot as, as a hall of fame selector. And we get a lot of them on this show. I think they put too much emphasis on Super Bowls for quarterbacks. Like, I think Eli Manning is going to be a Hall of Fame quarterback, but I don't think Eli Manning's a Hall of Fame quarterback. I think he had two good runs. Yeah. But he got two, and he's going to get in. So, yeah, I, I think Donovan's a really good player is what I'm trying to say. Oh, yeah, he was. But he, he left a lot on the table. He really did. I felt like, you know, he just didn't. When the Eagles traded him, he was devastated. He never yeah. put any ounce of effort into yeah, he was shut, Minnesota. Yeah, yeah. Washington, and, yeah. you know, he could have fought the good fight yeah. and, and been, you know, played three or four more years and had a couple of those years be real good ones, and there wouldn't be any debate about whether he was a Hall of Famer. But you're right about winning Super Bowls. That really is a big deal, not just at the quarterback position, but I think if you look at the Hall of Fame, and maybe they do things a little differently now. The the selectors change over the years. You yeah, know, they don't have the same yeah. guys that were selecting it 50 years ago. Yeah, but like the steel curtain, the whole steel curtain is in the damn Hall of Fame. Was every one of those guys 
one of the very best players of his era? Maybe. I don't know. But, yeah. you know, it just seems like it has a huge, huge impact on a guy's uh, stature. Now, now with Eli, I will argue that those two Super Bowls were part of – those were historic, especially the one where they beat the undefeated. Oh, yeah. Cleveland Patriots. Those but I would argue accomplishments. But you that, can't give you can't give the MVP to the defensive line, but right. that's who won the Super Bowl for the Giants yeah. both times. Yeah, but with Michael well, Strahan that was just true during the whole Bill Parcells era. Too. Yeah, yeah, uh, you know, but uh, yeah, I just I think you have to acknowledge the importance of certain games in NFL history. Oh, sure. You know, I'm participating in a thing Sports Illustrated is doing, trying to uh, the 50 teams that changed the game or something like that. And they had us rank all these teams and it hasn't come out yet. So I'm not going to give anything away, but I'll just say the Super Bowl Jets come off very, very well in this thing because that was for most for people our age. That was the single most incredible game, most oh, yeah. changing, epoch changing game in the history of football. Were the Super Bowl Jets really one of the greatest teams in football oh. history? Probably not. But, you know, uh, that's that's what people remember. Yeah, Joe yeah. MVP, only quarterback to never throw a touchdown pass. Didn't get a touchdown in the Super yeah. Bowl, but he still got the MVP of his prediction ahead of time. All right. I'm going to see if you'll bite for my last question. Let's, the Eagles starting center for the 2024 opener will be mm-hmm. who? Oh, Cam Jurgens. I'm pretty sure. Unless something happens this season that, you know, if he totally, if he can't win the right guard job and he goes into a funk or, if he does win the right guard job and he ha- suffers a horrible injury or if he wins the right guard job and doesn't play well, which I don't expect any of those things to happen. I think Cam Jurgens plays this season alongside Jason Kelsey at right guard, watches everything Jason Kelsey does, listens to every word Jason Kelsey says in the huddle, every tip he gives him on double teams and, and combo blocks and in 24 24- 25 it's it's cam jurgens uh at les bowen make sure you follow les on twitter bowen on the birds the podcast listen to him anywhere you get your your podcast you know you got me in a wormhole i was thinking when you were talking there les i can't let you go without i i assume what you're doing with that side it's going to be all good teams you mentioned Mm -hmm. the super bowl jets but you were there in 2013 when Chip Kelly came, I talk about this all the time because I look back and I say, well, Chip was a pain that he didn't get along with a lot of people. Yeah. I, I don't think he had filters. But, man, looking back in hindsight, he changed the NFL. Yeah. He changed the NFL. How, as somebody was there every day, how do you look back on that? So much of what he did that then is just accepted now. Yeah. And... I, I don't think he gets the credit for it. He doesn't. But on the other hand, he also destroyed the team with his. Yes. Bad well, that's part of the reason. I mean, you had this weekend Deshaun Jackson decrying yeah. Chip Kelly. You know, I, I think Deshaun Not a personnel feels like guy. Yeah. Chip really messed up Deshaun's career. I think Deshaun thinks. Uh, and LaShawn. But when I think about the top half dozen or so games I remember have from covering the Eagles, that game at Washington (laughs) week one. Yeah. Oh my God. That is right up there with anything I've ever seen in my life. (laughs) Remember he had like the, the, what do they call that alignment where the whole offensive line is over on one side. And (laughs) I mean, it was just, Mm. it was nuts. It was, he didn't do a lot of that stuff after that, but what was it? 56 points. They put yeah. up most of it in the first half yeah. and it was, ah, you know, you were like, I was, I was certainly a true believer that day. And yeah, I think see, uh, that, it that, took that, a that's long why, time. That's why he got his ass fired. That yeah. He didn't deal with people well, but he changed oh, was, expectations like that. Right. They went from being, yeah. uh, let's yeah. give this college guy a chance. To, holy crap. He's revolutionized the national football league. 
How long did that yeah. last? Not long enough for Chip Kelly to keep it. But John is right. It's, you know, some of those uh, things he brought in are still, everybody does the music at practice now. That's just a small one. There's a much bigger things than that. But yeah, the sports you know, science, nobody hits yeah, in practice anymore. Absolutely. Remember with remember no live? We were all like, what? No live hitting? Yeah. No live periods at all? Yeah. Now yeah. it's like nobody if you see a live period, it's like when Doug came in and I think he had two a summer, we were like, Wow, yeah. live. Yeah. Then it then it right. it's but gone he, the other direction. It's but amazing. he also was Mr. Up Tempo. Uh, time of possession right. doesn't matter. Yeah, guess what? It still does matter. See, Chip was right about certain things, but he was Look, also woefully wrong about a whole bunch of stuff too, John. I'm a possession can matter, but I said, I said no. People go up matter. tempo so up much tempo more than all, they the to, yeah, than all the time. Yeah, all the time. It he did he did bring that yeah forward quite a bit in the in the NFL. He really did. He and, just had uh, no filter to stop it. And, and that's what there and no personnel judgment and nobody yeah, yeah. to tell him that he didn't have any personnel yeah, judgment. Yeah. You know, he thought he thought very highly of himself. Yes. Yeah. You know, yeah, I remember. Sure, he, <laughs> yes, he pretty, did. Pretty sure he still does. When he went through the draft and he had no idea about this, having never done it before. And they kind of led him through the draft. And he said one of the things he said after the next year when he took over for Howie that kind of stuck in my mind was he. He looked at that draft and he saw that Odell Beckham was the best player in that draft. He would have known that, you know, and Beckham went, what, 13th or something to the Giants. And so Chip was convinced that having identified Beckham as as a standout player, this meant that he knew more than as much as or more yeah, than all these personnel did, yeah. guys. Well, I'd like to like tell her saying I saw so and so, you know, I thought he was going to be a great player. So therefore I should be the GM. Yeah. Of it. Yeah. He also wanted to take Taylor Hart in the third round, I believe, Les, yeah. and yeah. he uh he yeah. wanted to cut Brandon Graham for Travis Long. There's, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's personnel power yeah. for Chip so, Kelly. So Chip may still have influence in the league, but there's a reason why Chip isn't in the league because yeah. For as much Great as with upside, the X no, bunch of not with the Jim people. Too. Yeah. Les Bowen, we think very highly of you, and that's why we have you on as often as we do. Thank you very much for doing it. Next, and this has worked better, list. except for that one glitch where I tried to adjust my screen. Don't, that, don't adjust the screen. Using the laptop instead of the phone has kept me online the whole time. Have you lined up the next guest for the Bowen on the Birds podcast? Yes, it'll be three this afternoon. It will be that Paul Domowicz. We're going to talk oh, about Paul. Nice. Dama wrote a piece uh, for the 33rd. Yeah, I saw that. I, I, I saw the, it. It was good. Actually, he contributed to the piece. Yeah. It was written by their whole staff. Yeah. But he talked about the Eagles, who have good Hall of Fame cases and why it might be longer for some of them to get in than others. And I'm going to milk that for all it's worth today, guys. Yeah. Just got to get some people birds. upset with Jason Kelsey. Uh, you know, yeah. he didn't put them as well, a lot. centers don't. Centers I know. Don't, People the, don't understand. Right yeah. or wrong, the whole room doesn't rise up when you say center Jason Kelsey. You know, it, that's just not how football works. You yeah. know, it should <laughs> probably, but you know, that's yeah. no, that's it. Kelsey will get in. It might be a while. You yeah. know, yeah. Bob Brown died recently. Do you know how long? Oh it took yeah, Bob Brown. Oh yeah, the damn Hall of Fame. Oh. When I was a kid, Bob Brown, everybody understood that was the best offensive lineman in football. At, at <laughs> last, I covered I covered Paul Krause for, uh, and and well, yeah. not covered him, but I covered the Vikings and I knew Paul uh, for years. All time interception leader took him fifteen years to get in. That's why I thought, yeah. you know what, it's going to take Brian. I'm surprised how quickly. Brian Dawkins got in the Hall of Fame because yeah. they don't put safeties in the Hall of Fame. But or they don't for those many those years. Guys, the Hall of Fame process has changed. Yeah. They're putting more yeah. guys in every single year. Yeah. That's they have good. mandatory minimums. So guess yeah. what? Guys are going to get in faster right. than they used to get yeah. in. And uh, Mr. Kelsey's going to get in much quicker than Bob Brown did. I can guarantee you that. Oh, I, I agree so. with that. I but I, so. I don't think it's going to be year one is my only yeah. point. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be year one. Um, and I think that's going to upset some people. They'll it get will. in, yeah. but I, I think it's going to take a few years. Mr. Bowen, always a pleasure. Thank you very much for hopping in with us today. We'll get you back in a couple of weeks. Tell Dom when we said hi. I sure will. Thanks, guys. 
Thanks, Bowen. Les. That is Les Bowen uh, from Bowen on the Birds podcast. Oh, Thank we're late. Bowen. Sorry. I got uh, yeah. Les keeps getting me going down wormholes. He's All good. Right. Good guest. Quickie timeout, and we'll come back and put a bow on the show here on Birds Three Sixty Five.